afternoon, and first we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. Council meeting December 6th, 4.30 p.m. Roll call, please. Brad Hintz. Here. Randy Funker. Here. Pete Hamill. Here. Greg Gills. Here. Zach Sawyer. Here. Okay, a couple changes in the agenda. Under the consent agenda, we're going to move the consideration of approval of Sunday sales for Shotzi's Bar and Grill to item one. And the possible closed session of the city manager's evaluation, we are going to postpone that till December 20th, so the mayor can be in attendance. So, with those, um, we'll go to any public comments at this time. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Any comments, questions, concerns? Move to approve. Okay. Support. Uh, roll call, please. Funker. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Gills. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Hint. Aye. Okay, now the consideration of approval of Sunday sales for Shotzi's Bar and Grill. There was some discussion that wanted to be happened. Uh, one question I had is this this is different than what they had before in terms of their license? They've not had Sunday sales before? Correct. They do not have Sunday sales right now. Do we have any other places in town that offer the Sunday sales? Like Most this? Tulipanes does. And then most your your convenience stores, your grocery stores. Yeah, but I mean as far as yeah. serving it. Why but not? just Los Tulipanes is the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Okay. Direction approved. I, mean, I guess. Support. Okay. You made the motion, Pete. Yeah. I'll Second. support it. Okay. Roll call, please. Funker. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Hint. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Gills. Nay. Okay. Number three public hearing on the five year capital improvement plan. We have to open that public hearing. We'll open the public hearing. Do we have any public comments, written or oral comments? I have not received any. Okay. Entertain. I'll make the motion to close. Yep. yep. Uh, I'll second that. Roll call, please. Hamill. Aye. Gills. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Kent. Aye. Bunker. Aye. Okay, Sean will lead us through the capital improvement plan. Okay, the uh, capital improvement plan that you have before you is essentially a roadmap of potential city expenditures for capital improvement projects, equipment, and vehicles going, uh, going over the next five fiscal years. Um, the city council should pay close attention to the items that are listed in fiscal year 18 as those items will be included in the upcoming 2018-19 operating budget. Can you repeat that again? This is essentially a roadmap. Yep. Um, I mean, just the last part. Yep. So the, the items that, that we're looking at in fiscal year 18 would be items that will be considered going into the um, fiscal year that we're going to be preparing in 2018. Yeah, okay. All right. The other items going out in years um, uh, two through five um, are estimates at this point in time. Each year that, that we update the capital improvement plan, we'll use better estimates so we're able to actually adequately um, be able to budget for, for those particular items. Um, it gets rather difficult as you're going out into fiscal years 21 and 22. Um, those are, are kind of footnotes at this point. Uh, we'll revise those as we get closer to those, those time frames. 
Any particular questions? I see the airport. <clears throat> that one is, is that going to have a federal match? Yes, um, this is the, the, the federal match, so we're, we're paying 10% of that total cost. Um, I did verify um, uh, with our uh, consulting engineer, the first part of the um, snow removal storage building was the planning portion. Mm -hmm. The construction portion um, of that contract will be coming to the city council probably in, in May of next year. But uh, as you recall, you had a question regarding uh, the engineering contract. Right. That 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 engineering contract is, is to develop the plans to construct that particular building. Okay. And yes, it, it does have that match. All right. through it uh, item or anybody's got any other questions I guess at this point I don't see a reason to go through it line okay. item by line item that's where we would I mean we'd tear into that in the budget planning session not wouldn't that be the time to do that sure for the sake of time I think it's just presented we receive it as information and Okay. And anyone else have any further questions? Discussions? If not, we'll move on. Um, we'll have the fiscal year 2016-17 audit presentation by Tom. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Tom Heinrichsen. I was the in charge for the audit. Uh, I work at Spencer Winther Staven Company, and I will try to make this real kind of short and sweet this year. If you open up, I assume everybody's looked at the audit report. Um, pages two, three, and four, it takes us three pages to say that these financial statements are pre fairly presented in accordance with the cash receipts and disbursements method of accounting, the city reports cash basis. So these are all, all these, the statements are cash basis and they are presented fairly. Pages five and six is what I call the government wide statement. Uh, over all the funds and of the city are included in this. Uh, disbursements are on the, on the left side, then your direct charges for services and operating grants, capital grants, and you come over to uh, net after those direct receipts. And of course, all the governmental are being negative because the governmental activities are primarily funded by property taxes, TIF, and, and other, other loss and other non-general receipts. So you get down at the bottom, and the uh, governmental f activities, their cash went up 1069000 The business activities went up 572000 Citywide, there was an increase in cash of $6 million, uh, of one million six forty one three nineteen, leaving you a cash balance at the end of the year of $7 million. 153.386. Pages in seven and eight is this is the governmental funds. Uh, there's there's the major funds, the general TIF, lost, road use, debt service, capital projects, and then a column for just non-major ones. The detail is in the back on those. Um, Really, there was the TIF and the lost and road use, debt service, really no real changes there. They all had uh, minor increases. Uh, the general fund went down 388,000. Uh, 
primarily because we funded um, uh, some work out at the airport with the equipment uh, reserve fund, which is included in the general fund. So that's the reason that went down. Uh, the capital projects went up 995000 primarily because we issued bonds for future projects. So that that nine hundred the one million one hundred thirty three in cash and capital projects will probably be spent this current fiscal year. Pages in nine and ten is just a breakdown of the fund balances by restricted or unrestricted. Page eleven is just a reconciliation between the governmental reports and the sitting and the Citywide report on page one. Page 12 and 13 is the uh, cash receipts and disbursements for the proprietary funds, the water sewer, and then the internal services, which is a self insurance. Uh, water went down, cash went down 52,833 due to some purchase of some fixed assets. The sewer uh, funds went up. 644,000, but that's because we issued bonds of 700,000 for the wastewater treatment plant that will be spent um, this current fiscal year. Page 14 is another reconciliation. Page 15 is just a summary of what happened in the city's uh, cafeteria plan. Pages uh, 16 through 30 are the notes to the financial statements. I'm not going to go through them at all. Uh, if you have trouble falling asleep some night, you can read through those, and I guarantee you you'll fall asleep. I did writing them, so. <laughs> uh, pages 30 and 30, 31 and 32 is the, your non-major funds. The total of that goes to the front. Pages 33 and 34 are the summary of the city's debt. We started the year with uh, general obligation bonds of 6526 We issued 5795 We paid off 2785 End of the year, general obligation bonds, 9535508 and then our water revenue notes started 910. We paid off 136, so we have 774 in water revenue notes. Pages 35 and 36 is just a summary of how the how the bonds mature by by uh, issue. Pages 37 and 38 is a comparison of actual to budget. Uh, the disbursements, we were all under budget on everything except the general government, which we were over budget by 10927 10, That was due to um, uh, a, a insurance bill and legal fees that came in near the end of the year that weren't included in the budget. Pages 40 and 41 is just receipts and disbursements for the governmental funds for the last 10 years. 42, 43, 44, and 45 is just some more information on IPERS. Um, I don't understand it, but I think you need to be an actuary to understand IPERS. I do not. Um, pages 46 and 47 is a report on internal control and compliance with um, and other matters based on the audit. This report is required by governmental auditing standards, and we found no non-compliance or no in reportable internal control issues with the city. Pages 49 and 50. Uh, reports on findings related to statutory reporting. We there's the 
State Auditor Department requires us to report on these items whether there's non-compliance or not. We have to report on them. And in this case, we found it, the only issues were the certified budget being over on the, in the um, general, the uh, general, I have a, the general, general government function. Excuse me, I got him off track there. But that was really the only report findings we found, and that's in pretty immaterial. Sorry, I got a little <laughs> caught off course here. I'm sorry. Is there any questions? Went through that pretty quick. It's pretty much an uneventful year, I thought. Is that good or bad? That is good. Okay. We, we like uneventful. So all in all, you're happy with this report? Yes, I am. Good. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, city staff is, is very good to work with, and I, I enjoy it very much. If you do have any questions, uh, we're just 45 minutes away, telephone. I will be out for two weeks starting next week, so you, you won't be able to catch me, but uh, somebody in the office can always help. Thank you. Thanks to the city staff for the excellent budget news or audit report we have. Um, we need a motion to accept the audit, correct? So move. Support. Any questions, comments? Roll call, please. Sawyer. Aye. Kent? Aye. Hamill? Aye. Funker? Aye. Eels? Aye. Thank you. Um, Next item on the agenda, consider the final reading of the ordinance on sewer rate increase. Comments? Discussion? we just down the road to do the final approval. We don't have much choice. I'll make the motion to approve. Support? Discussion? I assume there's been no comments in the office. In None the since the last time, no. Roll call, please. Hamill? Aye. Hens? Aye. Gills? Aye. Sawyer? Aye. Bunker? Aye. Okay. Consider contribution to the O'Brien County Northwest <coughs> Iowa Regional House Housing Trust. This is an ongoing yearly deal we do. It, it is. Since the, uh, the, the program was put into, into place, the city of Sheldon has been able to rehab eight homes. And it looks like our contribution is $2,586? Yes, that's what they're requesting for next year. Can you explain, Sean, why there are some communities that show a balance? I mean, is it because they just haven't been paying? Because they have not been paying. That's correct. Cool. So whether we choose to do this or not, we will be assessed. Um, is that correct? That, I mean, it's a bill, not it, just a, it's not just a request for a donation. It, or a quarter. It's a request. And I think the reason they've got cash in there is maybe there haven't been any, any homes in those cities that needed rehabbing that they needed to use those funds for. Because it's ending balance. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the way I'd read it, too. Okay. Again, this is something that can be considered as we're going into budget, the operating budget discussions. Think they want to prepare their budgets ahead of time, but ultimately, when, when the city council decides on the operating budget in, in uh, the end of January, going into February, uh, that's when we would let the comment come. We did eight, eight houses, you said this last year? No, no, total since, since the census. Okay, census. <laughs> So 
so it looks like we get our money's worth. I guess that's a matter of opinion. But. Yeah. I think if we're getting something back out of it, I think it's a good right. deal for us. Yeah. So you, have requested you don't want additional to... information from the county on the program. Um, we should be in receipt of that. Certainly, I was hoping that it would be here before this evening's council meeting, um, but it will certainly be here well in advance of the budget discussions. So we don't you don't take action till budget then, because if you take my, action my now, final action would be on our budget. So. You can, you can delay until we receive that additional information. Really, $2,500 is yeah, I'm, isn't I'm a just, lot of money. Well, no, and but, we've been doing it for a yeah, number of years. Number of years. It looks like we get our money back. We've it's rehabbed eight really, houses. We and we can't do much that, with $2,500. We'll budget that amount. Okay, that, well, that makes sense. Well, then. It's I mean, being utilized in our community. I mean, yeah, it comes back to us. It's one this last year. They have a pot of money. If we don't take it, then it gets reallocated. Reallocated, right? yeah. Because here it looks like last year was 24, 24.04, and they paid back 24.04. So what we paid in, we got back, it looks like. Right. So it benefited the community. direction do we want to go well, I'll make the motion to contribute the 2586 to the regional Northwest Ohio Regional Health Trust support okay. discussion we'll call please Sawyer aye Bunker aye Gills aye Hamill aye Hint aye okay consider the reg uh, subdivision regulation waiver Micah? Sure. Um, we have a regulations code that um, by code extends one mile outside of the corporate limits. And under those regulations, if you're going to subdivide a larger parcel more than two times, you would be required to go through the formal subdivision process. It's kind of like we're doing for Floyd Industrial Park right now within the city limits. Um, there is a parcel being sold within that one mile extraterritorial region. Uh, that would be a third split. Um, so technically the subdivision regulations could be made to apply. Uh, there has been precedent in the past where the owner of land has represented there wouldn't be further subdivision and the city council has waived that. Um, in this case, the owner has represented that there won't be further subdivision. It was brought to P and Z and I believe P and Z recommended the waiver. Correct, Sean? Um, so um, based on that, there's a resolution prepared that would waive the subdivision requirements for this parcel um, and if with the understanding that if there are further divisions in the future that waiver would not extend to those areas and what we're talking about is uh, property if you go out on country club to the south kind of by the uh, exit on an exit ramps for um, highway 60 it's a, a piece of property out there. There's already two acreages, there'd be a third acreage. But in visiting with um, Sean and uh, given the past precedent and the owner's representations that this is just uh, the last piece and, and it looks like it could, would have to be the last piece based on the way the uh, access is, is uh, aligned. It's recommendation that the waiver be approved. Okay. So, do you have any further comments on that? 
again, the planning and zoning review would end it. Council's direction. Well, I think we ought to go along with the planning and zoning if they looked at it and approved it. Uh, I don't know why we would have any objection. I'll make the motion to approve. Okay. Support. Uh, discussion, last discussion. Roll call, please. Kent. Aye. Gills. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Bunker. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Okay, review the uh, Floyd Industrial Park preliminary plot to be approved by resolution at a public hearing. I believe this is Sean and Pat. Okay, we have, um, and then Kurt can also Kurt. give a, a little bit of background on, on, the, on the program. Um, Kurt, if you want to begin on, um, on the, the layout itself, and then um, our city engineer will explain the construction phase. Sure. So if you look at the plat there, um, first and foremost, the, the reason for the extension is, is pretty self-explanatory. We have currently 2.8 acres available of available development ground. That is zoned heavy industrial. That is our only heavy industrial ground within the city limits of Sheldon. So <clears throat> through the SCDC and the development committee and our planning, um, proper planning measures, we figured an extension of Crossroads Industrial Park made the most sense. Even with the acquisition of the Grand Sur ground, obviously, as the most recent acquisition for, for the city. So if you look at it, it's just going to extend Crossroads Drive to the south. And then we'll drop back over to the west to open up um, essentially five more lots for development. The largest lot being just over five acres. And then the other four lots of just being over, over two acres in size. And the development committee um, thought about the lot sizes in depth. And, and the reason they went with the two acres is because of what has sold in that industrial park previously. If you look at all the development projects that have happened outside of Ziegler Cat, which is an anomaly, um, everything has been just over that two to three acre um, size of ground. So um, some of them we parceled off into smaller sections as well, which we feel we, we could do here as well. Or if you had a buyer come in and want uh, two lots, we have the flexibility of doing that too and again, combining both lots together. It's just so hard to predict up front what the end user is going to be. So we want to provide some flexibility in doing that. So if you look at lot one, we do have a larger lot built in there, the five acres. And then we do have the smaller lots then on the west side that we feel is going to provide some high visibility off Highway 60 as you head north, which we certainly then think will be highly desirable lots for development once the, once the infrastructure is in place and the lots are ready for development. So. Uh, that's kind of the overview and the background on the, the thought process of the development committee on why we're here. Um, again, it's our only heavy industrial site in the city limits of Sheldon, um, which is why we're still looking at that, that infrastructure improvement for, for 2018. So if anybody has any questions for me or Pat had anything else you wanted to say there. Uh, just to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the proposed improvements, if you look in the, in the lower left uh, quadrant of that page, uh, it's a continuation of the the type of street uh, that was uh, constructed as part of the original Crossroads addition, which is a 28-foot wide rural slab. We have ditches on both sides. Uh, sanitary and sewer and water are, are uh, in, the, in the ditch lines, or uh, they're outside of the roadway. Um, Service lines are larger than normal to accommodate to, you know, what would be uh, possibly use for industrial use. Uh, I think it's a six-inch water service and a eight-inch uh, sanitary sewer service. Um, as uh, Kurt had mentioned, the the street going to the east, or sorry, back to the west, um, is in it in a cul-de-sac. Um, there was this cul-de-sac is the same diameter, same size outside wise as the turnaround on 34th Avenue. There was some discussion at the, the PNZ meeting whether that was large enough or not. I went back and verified uh, uh, the, the design vehicle that I used to, to size that to, to see if it was large enough. And um, I used the, the 
53 foot trailer uh, with a with a standard conventional uh, full full size um, tractor on it. So and there was plenty of room. The, the issues that the the issues that we have had on the 34th Avenue turnaround, we did not pave the center portion of that. And if you get some specialized trailers in there, their their trailer drags a little bit closer to the center. And that's where we've had issues with them coming off the pavement in the center of the cul-de-sac. Um, this turnaround will be paved entirely. There won't be a center island in it. So that won't be an issue on this one. Um, so I feel that this is more than big enough for, for turnaround of, of semis. Um, is the cul-de-sac even entirely necessary? You do need to turn around four trucks. Uh, this would be the, the most convenient way to turn around. You could have a T uh, where they could pull in and then back out, but uh, getting a full-size semi to do that, it, it, it's not an easy turning movement where at the cul-de-sac, you know, that is much easier for them just to turn, drive, turn back out. Just assume that if they were going down that street, they would be going to the business of their delivery and they'd be able to turn around at the That business. could be. It, you do get people that turn in the wrong spot, though, and then they get down there, and it's like, okay, how do I get out of here? Um, um, there was, uh, you know, Kurt had mentioned the five lots. You'll also notice that there's one very large lot, which is lot two on this. Um, and you'll also notice uh, I had it. It's a kind of a dashed line with arrows that kind of, meanders through that lot. That's kind of a, a, a low area in the lot, uh, drainage swale. There is considerable drainage that comes from the west and south that goes through this area. And that's one of the reasons we stopped the street where we did so we didn't have to cross that. Um, that would be a challenge if anybody was to develop in this lot two portion of it is how to cross that channel um, and uh, get sufficiently sized uh, culverts in there to be able to take the flow that would come through there. So uh, I guess lot two is mainly just the leftover from what we had previously. There is potential um, for somebody to use it, but it would be a more difficult uh, lot to to to, uh, to utilize. In fact, I don't think we're we're not dropping water and sewer services for that lot at this time because of that. Any questions on the infrastructure portion of it? Okay. Uh, further discussions? Then we will set a time, date and time for December 20th. Oh, oh sorry. We guess we need to approve this uh, preliminary plat. Sorry about that. Move to approve. Support. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Hamill. Aye. Gills. Aye. Funker. Aye. Kent. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Now we need to set the time and date of December 20th at 4.30 p.m., correct? Yes. Okay. To set that, please. Make the motion to set the time. Support. Okay. Discussion. Roll call, please. Kent. Aye. Sawyer. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Keels. Aye. Bunker. Aye. Okay, we're skipping number 10. Um, comments. Kurt, Lyle, Zach, Greg, Marika, one. Yep. spearheading uh, a um, overhaul of the city's website. Um, it's been a project that's been ongoing for a little over a year, and it's about ready to be released. I'll be sending a link to the city council so you can uh, review that. Um, or if there's any questions, um, you can send them to me, and, and we can look at maybe incorporating those before we do uh, release it to the public. There are a couple of different things that they're working through right now, um, but I'll provide that link so you can provide comment before um, we make the, the major release on that. Okay. Inge? No. Randy? No. Pete? No. Um, just a reminder of the goal setting session meeting um, December 13th from 11 to 1. So, 
here at the council chambers. So with that, I have nothing else. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Support. Roll call, please. Sawyer. Aye. Fields. Aye. Hamill. Aye. Bunker. Aye. Kent. Aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.